Hello, friends. Welcome back to Love Wrestling. Spencer Love here with someone while we were chatting before we started recording that isn't necessarily a bucket list interview, hopefully, but someone I've wanted to chat to for a long, long time, a musician, a professional wrestler, the 27-year-old piece of gold, Leo Rush joining me. Man, it's great to have you on here. Thank you so much for the time, especially uh, when you're at an exciting and I'm assuming a busy time, an EP coming out in a little over a week. It's got to be nuts for you, man. So thanks again. How are things? Thank you. I'm I, I'm super excited because you you introduced me as the 27 year old piece of gold. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't heard that one. I mean, the last time somebody called me that, or I called myself that, it was the 22 year old piece of gold. So, <laughs> I'm super excited, I'm super excited, man. Got to bring some deep cuts into it. And another deep cut, oddly enough, the first time that I got to watch you wrestle was right here in Alberta. You were up here in 2016 for Canadian Wrestling's Elite. We're proudly Canadian, man. So I got to ask any memories. How did you enjoy your time up here? Even though, again, it's uh, it's a bit of a ways away at this point. No, I, I man, I'm so glad that you brought that up because that was actually my first time being in Canada. And that yeah. was uh, that was like a what, how many shows? Were that? I think that was like a. 13 show tour uh, back to back to back to back to back. And I just remember having like, honestly, the best time in my life. I, I remember driving from Maryland in a car with a group of people and it took me about 30, 35 hours to get there, <laughs> uh, which was pretty uh, quite the experience, but it was fun. And, you know, I think one of the shows, there was a bunch of dogs in the ring at one point. <laughs> um, <laughs> So that was pretty cool. I mean, and just being able to see like Canada in its entirety, you know, on, on the West, you know, the Western part and, you know, being able to be, you know, down towards um, Ontario and Toronto and stuff like that too. So it, it was such a fun time. It, I love Canada. I, I hope that I, oh, I'm actually, I actually am going back <laughs> next month. So I'm looking forward to it. Very cool. Who are you wrestling for up here? I'm actually not wrestling. I'm, uh, I'm touring. Actually- yeah, I'm actually performing a uh, music, a music event that, that's going on, um, that's happening um, out in uh, Montreal. So I'm, I'm super very excited. cool. Yeah. Well, I know you'll enjoy it out there. It's one of my favorite cities in the world. And it transitions me nicely because, of course, your second EP, or I should say Not Found 2, the second EP in the Not Found series coming out on June 24th. Take me a little bit through the process because listening back to your music, obviously, you're a very, very talented musician. So maybe how does this differ from what you've done previously, whether in the Not Found series or any of the albums you put out? Yeah, I'm super excited for for this project to be out. Um it, it before before I submitted this project to to distribution, I um I just had to listen back to all of my previous music because I, I I needed to hear like my growth and I'm 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 super excited for this project to be out because you can see and hear just that you can you can hear my you can hear the growth within the music within my vocals. Uh, with the storytelling, um, uh, you know, becoming a 22-year-old piece of gold to a 27-year-old piece of gold. So, <laughs> so I'm, I'm, look, I'm, I'm so excited for this project to come out. I think one thing that um, you can expect, uh, uh, which was pr- pretty similar to the last project, was my vulnerability, um, which uh, has been quite the journey um, itself, you know, completely on its own, uh, you know, learning how to open up more as an artist uh, and having that translate uh, through wrestling and, and my personal life and just making it all like fit uh, well together. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it and I'm, I'm, I'm excited for my fans to, to uh, see this next leg and that next step within my, my music career. Yeah, man. And that's something I've certainly appreciated, whether your lyrics or the specific interview for me was the sessions you did with Renee and just how open and how vulnerable you really were. And maybe not the right phrasing for it, but like, is that easy for you to do? Is it something you maybe had to work on or or how do you find it being so open and honest about everything pretty well in your life? Yeah, it's um, it, it's definitely new. Uh, I've always been a pretty like closed off person. I mean, even even really now, uh, I I still am. Uh, I'm I'm definitely like an introvert, um, 
and it, that has its own struggles with being in like the entertainment industry. Um, but I mean, I like it. It, it, it. It's it's I'm appreciative. I'm so appreciative of my fans. Uh, um, and I think it's necessary um, to be open and vulnerable with them to take them along with uh, on, on this journey with me. Um, and, and it's super cool to see them. Uh, well, not to see them, but for me to know that they've been there since uh, the very beginning and they've seen me grow as an artist, as a person, um, as a father, as a husband, you know, everything is, um, you know, um, it, it wasn't easy because, you know, being a part of WWE and having a schedule like that and, you know, being so invested into my character, uh, I think a lot of people bought into who the character was. So it was hard to kind of break out of that um and 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 show people you know who who i am as a person who i am outside of you know leo rush you yeah. know what i mean like on screen so um it, it, it's interesting it's new but I'm, I'm 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 you know i'm a part of the journey uh just as much as my fans are i feel like we're growing together uh and we're learning together which is which is a beautiful thing and uh, i'm excited I like that you made the parallel as well with your professional wrestling character, your WWE Leo Rush, because that was certainly something that uh, surprised me to say the least, because you see this brash again, the 22 year old piece of gold at the time. And it, it certainly was a transition over on the musical end, but certainly an appreciated one. I very much enjoyed getting to uh, getting to dig into your catalog thus far. And especially the first match selfishly, because you know, you have Kevin Bennett on there. I've got some appreciations for some good independent wrestling, some good, music as well so how cool is that for you to not only get him on but a number of guests that are uh, both inside and outside of pro wrestling yeah um it, it's so cool it's, it's so cool to see um you know how many wrestlers there actually are that are you know pursuing or trying to pursue music so it's always good to have like those similarities with people that you're working with um i'm i'm super I'm I'm all, I'm I'm grateful to to have those you know relationships within wrestling because you know like, like you mentioned Kevin Bennett you know I've I've been knowing Kevin for for some time now I know he's a family man as well and he he's super invested in his music but he also loves wrestling and and um, you know I've worked with him in the past you know on a on a on a song on a previous um, album that that I've had called the final match so. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad that I, that I have those connections within wrestling and I'm, and I'm glad that, you know, it seems like the wrestling and music world uh, is so intertwined and, and it just fits so perfectly. So, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. It's not just Randy Savage doing Be a Man Hulk anymore, hey? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, not at all. <laughs> not at oh. all. Say La Vie, I know obviously Savage ain't going to be making an appearance on this one, but uh, any spoilers, any insight on to maybe any some potential guests you got coming up on the new EP? Um, so actually, no, uh, no guests on this on this cool. EP. You know, I like I I'm I'm pretty locked in and focused on myself as as an artist right now and trying to push push myself out there um, as a solo act. And, and to be respected as an artist that can uh, create a number of hits uh, as a solo act. So I, 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 I wouldn't want to, you know, there, there's going to be a time and place for it. I mean, I've, I've done features before and I've had features before uh, on my projects, but, you know, this is my first project that I'm releasing uh, with me being signed to a label and having a major distribution deal so mm -hmm. i i'd like to um you know put that attention on myself and um you know put myself out there you know uh betting on myself like i like i always do um and yeah uh, 
I am looking forward to having some features in the in in the future though uh, once this one is out. But for now, you can you can look forward to just seeing and or hearing me on on this project, not found to. Very, very cool. Put your real stamp on it, right? Not to take away from anybody else, but to put it right on you, man. I like uh, I like that a lot. Now, before we t- uh, finish this one off, I've got to touch on the wrestling end of things because it was very cool for me, of course, to see about a month ago returning New Japan's Capital Collision, of course, featuring you not only returning, but uh, appearing on commentary for a little bit, which is always great. How much do you enjoy commentary? Because you're, you know, I'm sure I'm not the first guy to tell you that you're a fairly natural talker to say the least man i love commentary i probably i love commentary more than people think i love commentary cool uh, I, i'd i'd um yeah i enjoy it i enjoy looking at wrestling from a different perspective uh but mm-hmm. still being there um you know I, I used to i feel like i'm a natural you know uh you know commentator because I've been a wrestling fan my entire life. You know, I grew up with wrestling toys, like hundreds of wrestling toys in my room uh, and, and you know, turning on the PlayStation and playing uh, everybody's entrance music. Uh, when I like pretend to walk my, you know, figure <laughs> down the ramp that I've made with like cardboard boxes and stuff like that. So, and you know, I would do my own commentary when I'm playing with, with the figure. So, I mean, it, I, feel, I feel like a kid again. Um, I feel like a kid again. And, and, it, and it's, it's pretty cool to be able to not only commentate, but commentate on people's matches that I've uh, looked up to, that I've wrestled, that I'm looking forward to wrestling. Um, there, there's just there's so much in, in commentary that I like. Well, and you mentioned there a little bit people you're looking forward to wrestling. Three people that you mentioned right off the bat were Robbie Eagles, Ishimori, and Takahashi as far as uh, what you said wanted to be the number one in the junior heavyweight division. Why those three specifically? Because as a fan, obviously, they're going to be great matches if and when they happen. But uh, why specifically were those the three that you called out? I mean, these are the top junior heavyweights. uh not just in the world, but I mean, within New Japan Pro Wrestling, all former IWGP junior heavyweight champions, um, you know, names that have been circulating within the company for, for quite some time. And, uh, you know, I, I, I want to be a part of that conversation. I need to be a part of that conversation. I feel like if I'm not a part of that conversation, what am I doing it for? You know what I mean? I didn't, I didn't sign up for this to, uh, to be, you know, behind these people, you know, whatsoever. Uh, and I feel like no matter, you know, what country or, or state, uh, I firmly believe that I am one of, if not the uh, best junior heavyweight in the world. Um, I, I, I believe in my style. Uh, I'm, I'm 100% confident in my abilities. Uh, and I think that, um, you know, I feel like I've always got a chip on my shoulder and that some some people might view that as a negative thing. But I view that as a positive thing because I feel like I, I work best when I have that chip on my shoulder. I like proving myself right and I like proving others wrong. So, uh, you know, it gives me the fuel that I need. Uh, you know, it feels like there's a fire <laughs> under me 24 yeah. seven and I and I. And I like it. You know, I like the heat. <laughs> so bring it on. <laughs> I love it, man. Now, of course, discretion, of course, on your end if you need it. But uh, were you slash are you medically cleared at this point? Can we expect you in there with those guys sooner rather than later? Or maybe what's the timeline again at, at your own discretion with it? I understand injuries ain't, uh, ain't exactly the most fun thing to talk about sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's okay. Um, I've, I've come to terms with it. I mean, it has been uh, pretty hard dealing with it, I think, because the in, I've, you know, suffering two injuries back to back, you know, both of my shoulders. Uh, it's, it's hard. And I, I, I don't know if this is a thing or not. But, you know, I think I was told, you know, with the with shoulder injuries, with them being, you know, close to my head i'm constantly thinking about it all the time absolutely the injury is just like right there just sitting on my shoulder and um i think that that was that was pretty difficult to uh to realize you know especially with hurting this shoulder and then rehabbing that and then hurting this one and i'm like well shit, this is the healthy shoulder now 
<laughs> so which is uh which is so crazy but um yeah. i'm i'm healing i'm i'm healing quickly too um uh, a lot faster than expected um i'm nowhere near uh um close to being cleared to to compete but uh that's okay uh i know that um I know what the end goal is. I know I know what needs to be done in order to to get there, and that, and that's what I've been doing. I've been putting in the work. I've been, uh, you know, um, staying positive about everything and uh, remaining uh, healthy uh, mentally uh, and, and physically. And uh, hopefully, you know, the I, I can only hope that it will be sooner than later. But at the same time, in no, I'm in no rush because I, I want to be 100% when when I'm back, and not yeah. just 100 physically I want to be 100% mentally too because the mental game is just as important as the physical you betcha man absolutely I'm glad to hear you're looking good on both ends of things and as we close her out here we've got one more a uh, couple of questions I suppose but all quick hits for you because I just need to ask your thoughts on you know we talked about rappers and wrestling sort of intersecting over the last little bit so uh, gotta get your thoughts on a couple individuals here as rappers starting with the man himself it's the month John Cena. John Cena. He's a good freestyle. I love it. <laughs> He's fun. It's fun. Yeah. Love to hear it. Yeah. Love to hear it. Josiah Williams. Oh man, one of the most talented dudes I've ever I've ever met. Uh, yeah, super super good. I, I love Josiah. Brought him up earlier. Kevin Bennett. Kevin Bennett, so incredibly talented. Uh, I first saw him when he did the Pokemon freestyle, and I couldn't believe that. He knew. <laughs> I can't, I can't believe he knew all the names and how to intertwine everything to make it make sense. Uh, that was, that was like genius. Oh, you're hitting me in the heart. If we had brought Pokemon up earlier, I, we probably wouldn't finish this in time for your next <laughs> interview. Got to ask you on Max Caster. Max Caster is good. I like Max. You know, he, he's got a lot of personality. He's got an edge to him that, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people don't have, I mean, he's got balls too. Like, so I think, uh, I, I like Max a lot. And of course, the guy who really got me introduced to it because I started watching professional wrestling with the WWE, R-Truth. R-Truth. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> I like, I like R-Truth. R-Truth's awesome. And I hope one day, um, I hope one day our paths cross again um, within wrestling. And I also hope when that does happen, we can make a track together. So. Love to hear it. And when that happens, my friend, hopefully you'll grant me the opportunity to have you back on because this has been an absolute blast. I set it off the bat and I'll say it again. It's thoroughly appreciated. You're taking the time, not just whenever, but at such a busy, at such a great time for you. Not found two coming out on June 24th. But before then, if people want to keep up to date with the 27 year old piece of gold, how can they do so, man? They can find me on social media platforms on Instagram and Twitter at I am Leo Rush. Uh, or if you want to narrow it down and just get, uh, you know, one bang for your buck, you can head on over to LeoRush.com and you can, you know, find my music on all streaming platforms as well as all of my social media platforms all on uh, one page. So, um, yeah, you can you can find me on there. Would highly suggest it, friends. I'm excited as all hell for the EP. I'm excited as all hell for you to get back in the ring whenever that may happen, friend. And I'm excited to have you back on here sooner rather than later. Friends, thank you for tuning in. If you want to keep up to date with the latest and greatest from Love Wrestling, follow us wherever podcasts or played videos are viewed at Love Wrestling CA. Follow us on twitch.tv backslash Love Wrestling CA because we've got an EP release on June 24th and Love Pro Wrestling 5 featuring Willow Nightingale, Rachel Ellering, and so many more from the Canadian wrestling scene right right here in Edmonton, Alberta. For Leo Rush, I've been Spencer Love. Thanks once again, friends. We'll see you on the next one.